Now it is my great privilege to introduce Thomas H. Kane, former governor of the state of New Jersey. Thomas Howard Kane served two terms as governor of New Jersey from January 1982 to January 1990. A graduate of Princeton, he, like Dr. Bloom, is an alumnus of Teachers College at Columbia University. And like Dr. Bloom, he knows what it is to lead a university, having served as president of Drew University for 15 years after leaving office in 1990. As a former teacher, education policy was of special importance to Governor Kane, a commitment he shares with Dr. Bloom. Before joining NJIT, Dr. Bloom worked with the governor as an assistant commissioner for education, responsible for statewide assessment, curriculum standards, math, science, technology education, and improving ur urban education through piloting the effective schools research and alternative education programs. Following the report, A Nation at Risk, which warned of the growing threat the U.S. faced if the quality of education continued to decline, Governor Kane worked tirelessly for education reform in our state, earning him a national reputation Governor Kane also addressed educational issues on the national level. He has served as chairman of the Education Commission of the States, a forum that allowed governors, legislature, legislators, educators, and others to discuss and evaluate programs across the country. More recently, Governor Kane headed the task force for strengthening higher education in New Jersey. This week, and all weeks. We acknowledge his key role as chairman of the National Commission on Terrorist Act Attacks Upon the United States, widely known as the 9-11 Commission. Governor Kane. Thank you very, very much. Mayor Booker. President Bloom, and all of you from the NJIT family. It is an honor for me to be here today. <clears throat> that was a nice introduction, but introductions worry me a bit because innovation and technology reminds me of a story I heard once about Thomas Edison. And he was introduced once at a dinner. And the introduction went on and on and on and on. And it finished with him saying, with the introducer saying, and now I will introduce the person who invented the talking machine. <laughs> and Edison got up and said, no, you're wrong, I didn't invent the talking machine. I only invented the first one that could be shut off. <laughs> At any rate, it's wonderful to be here because you represent so much that's important to our state, to our city, to our country. Uh, I had great pleasure this summer of walking around this campus and seeing the improvements and seeing the things that had happened here. And of course, my escort was Dr. Bloom. And to understand his pride, his pride in the history of this place, his pride in this faculty and the wonderful people it has on it, his pride in the diversity and accomplishments of the student body and his dreams for the future. As great as this place has been, he knows that you can get even better. So I learned so much, and I'll tell you something. What I used to say, NJIT and Dr. Bloom are just perfect together. <laughs> now, I know we've got a world of problems out there, and you do too, we're in the middle of a terrible recession, we've got uh, problems with our debt in this state and in this nation, we've got a growing inequality among our people, we're approaching a fiscal cliff. There is an incivility in our public life which troubles us and troubles us terribly. You know the Pew Research, I don't know if you saw it, you know the, the gap now in values between Republicans and Democrats according to Pew is greater than the gap between blacks and whites, 
between rich and poor, between men and women, between even the classes. And that's very difficult, very difficult to solve any of these problems with that kind of gap. Uh, and above it all is this feeling in the country right now, as shown in polls, first time in our history, parents are worried that their children are not going to have as good a life as they did. But, you know, we've always believed in this country that we could change the future. And in the past, we have. In the 20th century, we created the most prosperous society in the world, in history. We did it through education. We did it through innovation. The first part of the century, huge increase in the high schools, and the number and quality. Second half of the century, great increase in higher education, and the same thing. We created a workforce with high skills and opportunity, and out of that we produced tremendous income and a wonderful life for people in this country. Scientific project drove innovation, and that drove growth. So average income in that period increased, by the way, sevenfold. And the government did a number of things, National Science Foundation, the GI Bill, uh, after uh, the investment in science, after Sputnik, the Fulbrights, the community colleges, the federal loan programs, the Pell Grants, all of this done by people who weren't necessarily thinking of the present, but thinking of the future. And what kind of a place if you invested in higher education this country could become. Education and in science and technology have been key to our global success. Now, once again, we've got to do it all over again. Now, more than ever before, we've got to invest in science, invest in technology, to understand that if we don't do this, we're not going to be able to compete in this world. Other people are now copying us around the world. We've got to do even more if we're going to stay ahead of them. We've got to do, I think, certain things if we're going to create this knowledge-based society that we all need. First of all, on the federal level, we've got to continue to invest in science and technology and research. We've got to create a national core of 100,000 trained, what we call STEM teachers, that's teachers trained in science, technology, engineering, and math. And by the way, that's underway, the training of these teachers, these teachers already. We've got to take people who come to this country and study here in places like NJIT, come from other places to learn, and if they learn and if they get PhDs and if they want to stay in this country, they should get green cards immediately. We, we, we need their skills. And in New Jersey here, we've got to continue to invest in higher education, and by the higher education bond issue, it's very important, it's going to be in a ballot this fall. Make sure you vote for it and get your friends to, too. <clears throat> Look, we've got a lot of problems. We all know that. But we've had these problems before. We divided as a country. When were we most divided? During the Civil War. You know what happened during the Civil War? You know what Abraham Lincoln did in the middle of that war? He signed the Morrill Act. What was that? Creating the land-grant colleges, which are now the backbone of our system of higher education. He did that in the middle of the Civil War. He created a National Academy of Science in the middle of the Civil War. He had the vision, Lincoln did, to look beyond that war and see what you had to invest in to make this a great country and to keep this nation competitive in every way. This was question is whether we have Lincoln's vision and we have Lincoln's foresight and Lincoln's understanding and Lincoln's courage to look beyond today and invest in what's tomorrow. We, should, we, are, we are divided on a number of things. We should never be divided on what we can do to make sure this nation and our children have the best possible future. I'll tell you one final Lincoln story because his cabinet, people used to come in 
and things were happening all the time around them. There were crises, many, many crises every day. I mean, anybody leaders that, and that Booker goes through that, so does the governor, so does the president, crises all the time around you. Lincoln told a story, because Lincoln was a teller of parables. And he said, you know, one time I came in this young man, it was a stormy night in the field, and all of a sudden there was this shower of meteorites. And the young man had never seen us, he was scared to death. And he fell down, he's crying. And I said, I put his hand on his shoulder, and I said, you know, you see those meteorites? Look beyond them. Look up to the fixed sky. Look up to the fixed stars. Because on those fixed stars, you can set your course. There are still fixed stars. There is still Lincoln's vision. And we still have a lot to do. But I'll tell you, this is where it's happening. You at NJIT are doing it. You are the ones who are going to create this knowledge-based society. You are the ones who have the incubator companies here that are going to create the jobs of the future. With your past, with the vision that Joel has for this great university, this great school, uh, I'm not worried. I think you're going to have a very bright future. And because of you, we're all going to have a better future. Thank you, and congratulations, Joel.